we're going to be doing a treatment of the scalings today. So what we're going to be doing is trying to access and showcase a little bit of where the landmarking of anterior, middle, and posterior scaling is, as well as brachial plexus and a relationship to a couple muscles around it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just do a preliminary palpation of the area. So I'm going to palpate along sternocleidomastoid and see how it's moving. Uh, sternocleidomastoid often gets stuck or adhered to some of the other neck muscles like the scalenes. So one way to kind of palpate and feel where the anterior scalene is is by going underneath the lateral border of SCM. So I'm going to ask her to gently lift her head up. That gives me a clear defined clavicular head of SCM. I'm going to place my finger next to it. She's going to relax her head down. And then I'm going to try to push up underneath so that I can access this anterior scalene. So I can follow that belly all the way up onto these anterior transverse processes of her cervical spine in here, so the anterior tubercles of the TV piece, and it's going to go down behind the clavicle. So just landmarking the origins of anterior scalene, the TVPs are inferior to the mastoid and kind of in between angle the mandible mastoid process. So I want to go anterior to sternocleidomastoid, and right in here is the TVP of C1. And I'm going to lift this up towards two. So I've moved SEM out of the way, and now I'm getting on to three, and this is the beginning of the origins of anterior scaling. I'm rolling towards the front of the TVP, um, and thus trying to avoid compression directly on the brachial plexus, which is starting to exit out just below me and some of those other spinal nerves, but I'm gonna run my finger kind of down along underneath the lateral SCM, and I'm gonna ask her to take a deep breath in for me. Good, so that's gonna lift up rib one, which is attachment for anterior scaling, and I'm also gonna use the side of my hand and push just below her ear and ask her to laterally flex her neck into me. Good, and relax. So I'm definitely on anterior scaling, it's feeling quite ropey underneath, which is a pretty common thing, especially if people are apical breathers, they're breathing with their upper chest, it's going to usually stay pretty tight. But to access into the first rib and to feel its movement, I'm going to have to shorten the muscle. So I'm going to laterally flex and flex her neck, which allows me to drop in behind this clavicle, and then I'm going to ask her to take a breath in. Good, and now I can feel that anterior scalene's attachment on uh, that rib one. So this can be an assessment. You ask them to breathe in and you should feel that rib one elevate towards your finger with each deep breath. And that is often why this anterior scalene and middle usually get pretty tight. So we've palpated and run our fingers along SCM. The next object in line, especially down towards the bottom, is gonna be the brachial plexus and its accompanying artery known as subclavian. So if I place my finger right here on what I believe is anterior scalene, I go just off of its muscle belly and now I'm picking up a strong pulse. I don't know if you can actually see it, but my finger is slightly moving up and down in response to this major blood vessel supplying her right arm. So I want to avoid pressure down on this structure as I'm doing my treatment. So anterior scalene being here, the subclavian artery here, and then if I head out a little more lateral. In this location, now I'm on more middle scalene. So I'm gonna follow this middle scalene's belly up. Again, I'm just gonna check in. Are you getting any numbness or tingling where my pressure is right now? No, okay. So because it's brachial plexus, if you are compressing on one of those kind of spinal nerves exiting out, which form the brachial plexus, they may experiencing burning pain, neuropathic pain, or they could experiencing like a shooting kind of nerve, quick stabbing pain that goes down their arm all the way to their fingers or just into their upper arm. So I'm going to make sure I'm not compressing that. And as I'm going up, I'm staying a little bit more posterior um, than I was before. And this is her middle scaling, which goes all the way up to the second cervical transverse process right in here. So it's from two to seven. So again, two, and then running all the way down towards the seventh vertebrae, which is right in this area here. Now it might feel a little bit weird to say that I'm on a transverse process of the seventh 
vertebrae, but this is just trapezius. So if you're pushing through traps from this location, you'd be getting into your first and second rib. And again, the posterior aspect of the C-spine is in here, and I'm supposed to be on the most lateral part, which is why this would be approximately where your seventh TBP is in this location. So the middle scalene, again, heading towards that first rib, uh, anterior scalene to the scalene tubercle. We have our brachial plexus going underneath the clavicle and over that first rib, and then middle scalene again to that first rib. So similar, I'm gonna laterally flex and lift her neck up and drop down and ask her to take a nice breath in. Good, my finger is raising up and then it goes down. And get another deep, deep breath in for me. Good, right there, getting lifted up and exhale. And it's sinking back down. So this is gonna turn into some treatment locations for me when I'm trying to work on that scalene. And finally, I'm just gonna palpate and see how our posterior scalene is. So a little bit more oblique in its fiber direction. If this was the middle scalene, I'm gonna drop posterior in this lower quadrant of the neck and try to avoid strumming levator scapula. So again, I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath in. Good, and I'm feeling myself get lifted up and back down. We cannot access the insertion of posterior scaling, which is on rib two. Um, you can get a little bit of its muscle belly, and then again, its attachments is the fifth, sixth, and seventh transverse process of the cervical spine. So now that we've kind of discussed where their locations are, um, just some general treatment is running down. If you have still haven't put oil or lotion on, we can do a little bit of a pinion stretch. Again, take into account where the blood vessels and nerves are, um, but one I typically like to use is pushing down towards their insertion and slowly laterally flexing away. Lateral flexion being the main function of the scalenes. So once you get a nice tissue barrier, you might pause, ask them to take a deep breath, which is actually gonna tighten up the scalene a little bit. And then when they exhale, I might be able to take up a little bit more slack. It's kinda sorta like doing a contract relax stretch because each breath is gonna somewhat activate the muscles if they're taking deep breaths using those resp uh, respiratory muscles. So this could be, again, a little bit of treatment, repeating it for each one of the scalenes, a little bit of a pin and stretch. I'm gonna put a little bit of a lubricant on my hand here. We're gonna rotate her head just away from me so I have easier access to apply some oil motion. Making sure I don't get it all through her hair. Going to, again, start off with some gentle effleurage strokes, and then I'm gonna start getting into these scalenes, lateral aspect of the neck. We wanna make sure that we've released a little bit of sternocleidomastoid so it's not in the way. I wanna make sure I've done a little bit of work to trapezius here. So again, I'm gonna spend some time on trapezius and then some of the other posterior neck muscles. The levator being the closest one in proximity, but then you're gonna get into your spleenius capitus and cervices and other various muscles here. Okay, bring your neck back to neutral. I'm gonna do a, just a gentle, slow stroke going down along those transverse processes again. And the closer I get towards the lower attachments, I wanna make sure that we're still good on a pain scale, as well as I'm not causing any compression of the nerves or arteries. Some people really like using their knuckles in the side of the neck. Um, myself, I'll do it a little bit, but I don't tend to really dig in with the side of my knuckles. So if I am gonna use it, it's gonna be a soft knuckle and I'm going to use it as more of a broad surface. And then what I like to do is kind of push down on the scapula and kind of mobilize the scapula away while I'm holding her neck straight. So I'm not really digging my knuckle in and going down along the side of the neck. I just personally don't like the thought of having somebody drag their knuckles across my brachial plexus. It's just not my favorite thing. Again, trapezius. I'm going to go in, try to use a picking up or a scooping motion. Make sure I can peel it off of the side of the neck here. So pulling it down towards the table a little bit like so. Again, you can stand up and do some techniques. We can try to grab onto it and 
and lengthen it out this way. Creating a little bit more space for me to get into those scalenes. Again, I might go underneath the shoulder a little bit, try to hold the scapula down because trapezius does some contra rotation, I mean an ipsy rotation and laterally flexing her way while holding down her scapula and a chromion. So I'm getting a little bit of a nice stretch and what you might not see with my fingertips is I'm trying to go up along the bottom of her occiput near her EOP. So I'm getting a pin on the uppermost attachment with my bottom fingers here. So I'm getting both attachments as well as a nice lateral flexion away. Okay. So again, now that we've created a little bit of softness from trapezius on the side and the SCM is nice and loose already for me, I'm going to just sink in and try to use a little bit of digital pressure on this anterior scale. So I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath in for me and exhale. And I'm going to use a digital pressure down. Now as soon as I do that, I want to make sure that A, I'm not compressing any blood vessels or nerves. I do not feel a pulse right now, so I'm going to check in. Are you getting any symptoms into your right hand or down your arm at all? Any burning sensation? Mm -hmm. And on a scale of five, where would you say we're at with this? Um, like a two or three. Two or three. Okay, I'm okay with that. So I'm just making sure that this is pain that she's able to breathe through. In reality, this is just solid pressure or a little tiny bit of comfortable pressure. Um, and I don't really want to go above that at all. So I'm going to go a little bit lower, similar procedure towards that first rib. Again, one more time, take a nice deep, deep, deep breath in for me. And exhale all the way out. Nice. So some strokes down along the muscle tissue, some point pressure release, a little bit of stretching. Um, and that's really what I use the majority of the time for the scaling. Um, I'm going to finish off with just a little bit of a contract relaxed stretch. Um, the majority of the scalings, again, all three of them do lateral flexion. And I want to not necessarily do lateral flexion of the head. I want to work with more of the neck. So I'm going to be cupping towards the base of her skull and the top of her neck. And I'm going to bring the neck as far as I can into a comfortable lateral flexion. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. And then with my other hand, I'm going to be kind of pushing down onto the clavicle, scapula, and as well kind of thinking where that first rib is. So I'm going to use some pressure down. So I'm going to ask you to take some nice deep breaths. Let's move my thumb out of the way here. Good. How's that feeling with our stretch? Oh, Another nice deep, deep breath in, all the way in, all the way in. Try to raise your rib up a little bit and exhale. So this feels really stable to me. And again, we'll check in to make sure we're not causing any symptoms in the arms at all. I am compressing the clavicle down. So if a person is prone to having thoracic outlet syndrome, they might start feeling a little bit of that compression as well as we are lengthening the scalenes a little bit, mainly the lateral flexion component. So again, they might feel a little bit of symptoms with that. Now that I've held it for a few good solid breaths, I'm just gonna ease off my pressure and bring her head back towards neutral. Okay, again, a little bit of a palpation. I'm gonna check both sides. Not doing both work at the same time. I'm gonna feel the tone of each one of these muscles. And that's gonna conclude just a little bit of a treatment for the scalings today. I hope you enjoy.